Welcome to the Beamsville Church of Christ online ministry. Services are presented on YouTube, Facebook, and our website one week following recording. This week's message is titled Father's Day. Thank you to Paul, John, Gloria, and Don for being involved in the video. The scripture reading is Matthew 6, 5-13. Don quotes from the Father's Love Letter, used by permission, Father Heart Communications, copyright 1999, fatherslovelettercom Good morning. Welcome this fine Sunday. Uh, I welcome everyone in the, with the warmth of Christ. Uh, I hope today we have a wonderful time together worshiping God and Christ together and learning something of his word and partaking in communion. Uh, before we get going, uh, we have a couple announcements. Uh, thank you to Martin and Janet and John for beautifying the gardens uh, and the grounds. These do look quite nice. The flowers are from Great Lakes to thank us for our ongoing efforts uh, to support staff and students. Uh, please take some with you at the end of the meeting. Uh, are these the ones outside? Uh, no, they're, oh, there we go. I'm not sure, uh, you figure out how to take some. Uh, that's not my skill set. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Uh, do, do, do Song Fallen Communion was written by one of the GL students who sang for us on the 5th in June. Uh, and the lyrics are from Psalm uh, 73. Birthdays this week, Shirley T. and Sele- uh, Selena M. Anniversaries, Gloria and John R. Uh, Glennis and John F. Dorothy and Glenn G. All birthdays and anniversaries, I assume, are under 20. Because we're all so young still. We'll just end it there and move on. Camp Oma is holding family barbecue uh, July 3rd, uh, starting at 3 with swimming, singing, and supper, if you're interested. And in addition to that, uh, we have a lovely card from the Parker family. Uh, It will be posted at the back uh, if you would like to go ahead and read that at a later time. Let's start this morning with the prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for all you've given us and all you've blessed us with. Thank you for this day. Lord, we come to you knowing that you are our God, our creator, our sustainer. But more than that, you have given us your son. You have welcomed us into your family. You have invited us to go on mission with you. Uh, Lord, may you bless us in our day to day. Uh, May you bless us in our moment to moment. Uh, We rely so much on your blessing. Uh, bless us this morning. Uh, help us to be to open our hearts and our minds to what is said. Uh, help us to participate with opened hearts and minds as well. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good morning. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit. He takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing." And as a person who lives in vine land, uh, I can relate to these, this passage. You think about it, this is one of the few things that Jesus used as an illustration that we in this area can really relate to. I always think about the people out in the vineyards uh, in the wintertime, out there in the freezing cold, snipping off those dead branches. And that, that kind of reminds me of what I was before I became a Christian. I was a dead branch. And God come along, we'll snip that off, see what happens. And then, as you are a Christian, you begin to grow in the vine. A little leaf comes out, a little more, a little more. And one of the things I noticed here as I read this again is that I was coming in uh, the back road there. And in some of the vineyards, there's these other branches that are just growing all over. They come along shortly, snip them off. They don't trim them back to, right to the vine, but... The long, straggly ones, they clip them off. And that causes the fruit to grow. It's amazing to me as I, I watch this every year that we are the, 
the branch. Jesus is the vine. Our life is taken from him. And if somebody took us off of that vine, we're of no value for any purpose at all in this life. And so when we see that come the fall, we'll start seeing big clumps of grapes. And that's fruit that comes from uh, the branch because it's staying in the vine. And so we're asked as Christians to stay with Jesus. Without him, we can do nothing. But as we stay with him as the, and get our life from the vine, or yeah, from the vine, then uh, we get to bear this fruit. And sometimes I think about this, and I go over to uh, Galatians in chapter 5, uh, beginning in verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. This is what happens as we stay with Jesus, we grow in this life, this is the fruit that we should be bearing. Wow, how are we doing with all this stuff in our life? Are we gentle, are we kind? And we need to think about that this morning as we come about the Lord's table. We stay with the vine, we are the branches, we bear the fruit. And as a result of that, many other people are blessed by the lives that we live. And so we have a chance now to remember that this is because Jesus died for us. He gave his life so that we could live. So let's give thanks for the, the loaf and the cup at this time. Father, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord. For without him, we can do nothing. But with him, we can do all things. That whatever we ask in his name, he will give it to us. And he will bless us according to his will. We thank you, Father, for Jesus' body that was given upon the cross of Calvary, that was given in place of our sin, and he took it all upon himself there. And Father, for the cup that continues to cleanse us of our sin, and his blood continues to wash us. And we just thank you so much as we remember him at this time, for we pray through his name. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from Matthew 6, 5 to 15. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day. Looks like a lot of our fathers are on the golf course still this morning, but uh, we wish them well. Following the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus said to his followers, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Everyone has a father. His name is the Lord God. And he knew you and me before we were born. In fact, he knows us so well that he knew the exact 
time and places where we would live. Our Father knows us individually better than we know ourselves. We just read the Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to date myself. I don't know about anyone else. But for many, many years, growing up from the kindergarten, probably all the way up until I think it was about grade seven, we would begin our class in the mornings at school, and we would stand and we would sing, and if it was a long, long time ago, God save the Queen, and then it became O Canada, but then we would stand and we would recite the Lord's Prayer. How many of you did that? So can we just go back in time for a minute and pretend that your school desk is right in front of you, and we've already sang, O Canada, or God Save the Queen, if you're old enough, God Save the King, and let's just stand up and recite the Lord's Prayer the way we did years ago, if it's convenient for you. Let's go ahead and say it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Father's Day is a wonderful day, unless it isn't. And sometimes it isn't because of circumstances in life. But for many of us, Father's Day has always been rather precious. I came across this article a number of years ago written by a Reverend Janice Croucher, who was the children and family minister of the Sindel Baptist Church in Melbourne, Australia. And she preached a sermon on Father's Day and very real are her words. Some of you have sad memories of a father who mistreated you, even rejected you. Some of you dads are hurting because you know there will be no contact today with the child you loved and love. My dad was an unhappy man, she says, who had a violent temper. He whipped his belt off frequently to use on one or all of us six children, six children. But I recall in my first year in high school winning a prize for mathematics and having to go up on stage to receive my reward. And as I turned, I glanced at my parents and saw on my father's face the most amazing beam of pride. That beam carried, through, carried me through many of the traumas that I would later experience. Unfortunately, I always felt I had to earn my father's love, always trying to earn it and always failing. But God, our loving Father loves us more than we can put into words. And it was put into words many times. And way back in the Old Testament, in Psalm 2710, it says these incredible words. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. If you ever doubted that God loves you as his child, remember God's promises. He says it all throughout scripture. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am the Lord your God who takes you by the hand and says to you, 
Do not be afraid. I am helping you. That promise was said many, many years ago, and it's as true and relevant today. One particular father said these words. When I came to know my heavenly father at the age of 15, I was overwhelmed by his love for me. He, he led me to the Apostle Paul's words, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. And I began to see my physical father as God's gift to me, the one chosen to provide for, for me. And, and I wrote to my dad, and I, I apologized for any pain I may have caused him, especially during my teenage years, thus contributing to his frustration. He wrote back, and for the first time ever, my dad apologized to me. Can you imagine? For stating the night that I was baptized, that if I went through with my baptism, that my father would say to me, you can't ever come home again. This was the beginning of a dialogue with my father that continued by letter. I wasn't welcomed home. Shortly thereafter, my father went missing, and he was never found. My brothers and sisters and I had a memorial service, and I remember saying, you know, in spite of everything, we did love Dad, didn't we? And they each answered affirmatively. And we continued on our way home singing some of the songs he had taught us in our earlier years. So I remember what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 8. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And by him, we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, Lord God, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our own spirit, Scripture says, that we are God's children. Now, if we are God's children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. Imagine that, co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we have to share in sufferings, we will also receive in glory. That's a promise that our Father has made to each and every one of us. Have you ever asked, well, where did Father's Day come from? Where did it originate? Why did it originate? I came across this article that explained it. Father's Day was originated in the United States through the tireless efforts of Sonora Louise Smart Dodd of Spokane, Washington. In 1909, Dodd got the idea of Father's Day at church one day while listening to a Mother's Day sermon. Her purpose was to honor her father. His name, Jackson Smart, a Civil War veteran. Smart had been forced to raise his children by himself after his wife died in labor with their sixth child. Dodd realized the strength and courage her father had shown by raising six children, including a newborn, on a farm by himself. So she drafted a petition which recommended the adoption of a national Father's Day. The initiative was backed up by the Young Men's Christian Association and the Spokane Ministerial Association. Through her persistence, 
Spokane celebrated the first ever Father's Day on June 19, 1910. At around the same time, in various towns and cities across the United States, other people were starting to celebrate a kind of Father's Day as well. Soon after, organizations and states began lobbying Congress to declare Father's Day a national, annual event. In 1916, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson approved the idea but it wasn't until 1926 that President Calvin Coolidge recognized it as a national annual event. In his speech, Coolidge stated Father's Day would establish more profound relationships between fathers and their children and impress upon fathers the full measure of their obligations. Since then, Father's Day has been celebrated by families every third Sunday in June. The actual presidential proclamation of the holiday occurred in 1966, for some of us that wasn't too long ago, by U.S. President Lyndon Johnson. The rose is the official flower for Father's Day, and traditionally red roses were worn to honor a living father and white ones were worn if the father had died. Father's Day has been adopted by Canada, Europe, and many other countries, and has become a day not only to honor dear old dad, but all the men in your family who act as a father figure, stepfathers, uncles, and all males that help. And then I came across this article that has a touch of humor. You know, a lot of dads like humor. And this is called The Creation of a Father, One of God's Greatest. It's the story of uh, an angel sort of debating with God. So you just picture this in your scene. It's called The Creation of a Father, One of God's Greatest. When the good Lord was creating fathers, he started with a tall frame. And a female angel nearby said, uh, God, what kind of father is that? If you're going to make children so close to the ground, why have you put fathers up so high? He won't be able to shoot marbles without kneeling, tuck a child in bed without bending, or even kiss a child without a lot of stooping. And God smiled and said to the angel, Yes, but if I make him child size, who would children have to look up to? And when God made a father's hands, they were so large and sinewy. And the angel shook her head sadly and said, Excuse me, Lord, but do you really know what you're doing? Large hands are clumsy. They can't manage diaper pins, amen, small buttons, amen, rubber bands or ponytails, amen, amen, or even remove splinters caused by baseball bats. And God smiled and said, I, I, I know, but they're large enough to hold everything a small boy empties from his pockets at the end of the day. <laughs> small enough to cup a child's face in his hands. Then God molded long, slim legs and broad shoulders, and the angel nearly had a heart attack. Boy, this is the end of the week, all right. Do you realize you just made a father without a lap? How is he going to pull his child close to him without the kid falling between his legs? And God smiled and said, a mother needs a lap. A father needs some strong shoulders to pull a sled, to balance a boy on a bicycle, or to hold a sleepy head on the way home from the circus. God was in the middle of creating <laughs> two of the largest feet anyone had ever seen by an angel, and she could not contain herself any longer. That's not fair. Do you honestly think that those big boats are going to dig out early in the morning when the baby cries or walk through a birthday party without crushing at least three of the guests? And God smiled and said, they'll work. You'll see. They'll support a small child who wants to ride a horse. 
or scare off mice at the cottage. Finally, almost as an afterthought, God added tears. Then he turned to the angel and said, Now are you satisfied that a father can love just as much as a mother? And the angel shutteth up. (laughs) So there's incredible stories in Scripture that talks about God being our, our loving father. And one of the pictures that I've seen in my mind for many, many years as these scriptures have been read, and what I'm going to read to you is probably very familiar to you, but I like to picture it in my mind about the connection that God has with us and still has with us, and we return that connection to him. So in Acts chapter 17, this is not a lengthy scripture at all, Paul was debating with various religious people of that day. And he kind of cuts through everything, and this is what he says, and I'm going to read from Acts 17, I think starting in around verse 24. This is, this, is what, this is what he said. The God, our Father, who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth. He does not live in temples built by hands. He is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. He gives us everything else. God gives us life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God knew when we were going to be born, how it was going to go. He knows us today. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him, our Father, we live and we move and we have our very being. God did this for all of us. Our Father. So if you have no memory of a father, you have one. And even the father that may be with us today, that's great. But your father has the father. Your father has God as his father. And the son has a father. And it's God. The God of gods. So let me conclude this Father's Day message with uh, an extraordinary number of scriptures that will pull it all together. You, you can't see it on this piece of paper, but there's scripture after scripture, and in behind those scriptures, there is hands cupping a brand new baby. It's, it's a picture of God holding a brand new baby in his hands. Some of us fathers remember that. We remember when we held our baby for the first time. And no words can express it. So lots of scripture, but I think you get the point. God, our loving Father, said. God, our loving Father, said. You may not know me, but I know everything about you. Psalm 139. I know when you sit down, and I know when you stand up, Psalm 139. I am familiar with all your ways, 139. Even the hairs on your head are numbered, Matthew 10, 29. You were made in my image, Genesis 1 and 27. In me you live, in me you move, And in me you have your very being, 
Acts 17, 28. You are my offspring. Acts 17, 28. I knew you before you were conceived. Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5. I chose you when I planned creation. Ephesians 1, 11 and 12. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. Psalm 139, 15, 16. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. Acts 17, 26. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14. I knit you together in your mother's womb. Psalm 139, 13. And I brought you out on the day you were born. Psalm 71, 6. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. John 8, 41. I am not distant, I am not angry, but am the complete expression of love. 1 John 4, 16. It is my desire to lavish my love on you, my child. 1 John 3, 1. Simply because you are my child, and I am your father, 1 John 3, 1. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, Matthew 7, 11. For I am the perfect father, Matthew 5, 48. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, James 1, 17. For I am your provider, and I will meet all your needs, Matthew 6, 31. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. And because I love you with an everlasting love, Jeremiah 31, 3. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sand of the seashore, Psalms 139. And I rejoice over you with singing, Zephaniah 3, I will never stop doing good to you, Jeremiah 32, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all your heart, all my heart and soul, for it is I who gave you desires to be close to me. Philippians 2.13, I'm able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. Ephesians 3.20, for I am your greatest encourager, 2 Thessalonians 2. I'm also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles, 2 Corinthians 1. When you are brokenhearted, I'm close to you. Psalm 34.18, as a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe every tear from your eyes, Revelation 21, 3 and 4, and I'll take away the pain that you've been suffering on the earth, Revelation 21, 3 and 4. I am your father and I love you even as I love my son, Jesus, John 17, 23. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed, John 17, 26. He is the exact representation of my being. Hebrews 1, 3, he came to demonstrate that I am for you and not against you, Romans 8, 31. And to tell you that I am not counting your sins, 2 Corinthians 5, 18, 19. And Jesus died so that I can be reconciled, 2 Corinthians 5. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. 1 John 4, 10. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. Romans 8, 31. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you have received me. 1 John 2 and 3. Nothing will separate you from my love ever. Romans 8, 38. Come home, and when you come home, I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. 
Luke 15, 7. I have always been father and always will be father. Ephesians 3. My question is, will you be my child? And the last scripture God says is, I am waiting for you. Luke 15, 11. Signed, love, your dad, almighty God. Happy Father's Day. I'm the oldest child in my family, and I'm not a child anymore, as you can see. My mother, before she passed, she spent a lot of time and and made albums of pictures. And there's this one picture that I had never seen before, and it was my mother holding me as a newborn and looking up with looking up at the camera with the deer in the headlights look. <laughs> and I know exactly what she was thinking because I had the same deer in the headlights when I held my first child. Now what? Being a parent is an adventure because we don't really know what we're doing. I mean, basically, we're learning as we go. So as the oldest, and there were five more to come after me, spanning 15 years, um, so I was the first one to get into trouble in the neighborhood, uh, first one to get in trouble in school, have bad report cards, first one to uh, injure somebody other than a family member. First one to go to high school, first one to graduate, first one to get married, first one to leave home, first one to have a child, grandchild. And I can remember one time when I was about 15, doing what I would call selective exegesis. I quoted this to my father when I was, felt like I was being mistreated. And what I quoted to my father was, fathers, do not exasperate your children. I can tell you that it didn't go well after that. (laughs) Because I I missed the three verses that were directed to children about honoring and obeying and, and, and stuff like that. And he really was trying to train us in instruction in the Lord. So... So on Father's Day, I think of my father. I think about that journey that I had had with him. Um, very positive for the most part, but it was bumpy at times too. And I think all of us have had that kind of experience because our fathers were imperfect, as we are. We're we're all imperfect, but uh, anyhow, great memories in some ways. I could see, you know, my father's form of discipline for me and for my youngest uh, brother, quite different. Um, I would say that he, at at beginning, he believed very strongly in administering the Board of Education to the seat of learning. And, um, And he was much gentler with my younger siblings. I don't hold that against them, I think. When I recall, I deserved everything I got because I was the master at creating confusion. When you create confusion, then you don't always get the discipline that you need, but eventually uh, they figured it out and I got the discipline. So just a little sideline on the on the message today, I, uh, I do believe that, that I've lived a, a life that would honor my father. And I think we hopefully all can say that we, in some degrees, been able to do that. And if not, we've risen above their expectations. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone, for participating this morning. Um, just as we close in prayer, uh, I always find it amazing uh, the different names, <clears throat> Father, Abba, in Scripture, especially as Jesus uses them. Uh, and I am not a Hebrew person, uh, but uh, you can get the sense for the different types of the names. Father, the more powerful, the more reverent, the more respect-filled. Abba, something a small child would cry out. Abba, easy to say, easy to speak. We are invited to come to God and say both names. Uh, all that power and respect and authority, but then the Abba suggests that he's willing to use all that in defense of and for me when I come to him and utter in my most deepest way, Abba. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for all you've given us and all you've placed us with. Thank you for today. Lord, may we go from this place a blessing to our families, a blessing to our friends, a blessing to those we may meet. Uh, may we remember your message. May we remember your words. And may we always remember the community of believers that goes with us, whether in spirit or in person. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching or listening. The Beamsville Church of Christ meets at 4900 John Street, Beamsville, Ontario. We are currently holding in-person services following provincial COVID-19 regulations. Scripture quotations marked NIV, taken from the Holy Bible, New International Version, NIV, copyright 2011 by Biblica Inc., used by permission, all rights reserved worldwide. Scripture quotations marked ESV are from the ESV Bible, the Holy Bible, English Standard Version, copyright 2001 by Crossway, a publishing ministry of Good News Publishers, used by permission, all rights reserved. You can find out more about the congregation on our Facebook page or at beamsvillechurchofchrist.ca.